Political activist, academic professor, and author, Angela Yvonne Davis is known as a prominent figure who advocated for prison reform and gender equality and alliances across color lines, a term used to reference racial segregation. Motivated by her segregated upbringing in Birmingham, Alabama, Davis was a voice for the oppressed. Journey with us as we give you an insight into her life. Don't forget, if you like what we do, be sure to like, share and subscribe. Davis was surrounded by racial prejudice from a young age. Born January 26, 1944 in Birmingham, Alabama, within a neighborhood nickname Dynamite Hill due to the number of homes bombed by the Ku Klux Klan in the 1950s. She grew up in a middle-class household to parents Sally Davis, an elementary school teacher, and Frank Davis, owner of a service station. She had two brothers, Ben and Reginald, and a sister, Fania. Her mother, Sally, was an active member of the NAACP. Davis attended Carrie A. Tugger School, a segregated black elementary school and later Parker Annex, a middle school branch of Parker High School in Birmingham. During this time, Davis' mother, Sally, was a national officer and leading organizer of the Southern Negro Youth Congress, an organization influenced by the Communist Party, aimed at building alliances among African Americans in the South. Davis grew up surrounded by communist organizer and thinkers who significantly influenced her intellectual development. Davis was involved in her church youth group as a child and attended school regularly. She attributed much of her political involvement to her involvement with the Girl Scouts of the United States of America. She also participated in Girl Scout 1959 National Roundup in Colorado. As a Girl Scout, she marched and picketed to protest racial segregation in Birmingham. By her junior year of high school, Davis had been accepted by American Friends Service Quaker program that placed black students from the South in integrated schools in the North. Angela Davis was later awarded a scholarship to Brandeis University in Massachusetts where she was one of three black students in her class. She studied philosophy with Herbert Marcuse after meeting him at a rally. In a 2007 television interview, Davis said, Herbert Marcuse taught me that it was possible to be an academic, an activist, a scholar, and a revolutionary. Davis added to her studies by taking on a major in French. She had previously traveled to France and Switzerland to attend the 8th World Festival of Youth and Student after saving up enough money from working a part-time job. She was accepted by Hamilton College junior year in a France program where she would study in southwestern France. Davis' passion for philosophy was growing greater so she returned to Brandeis and she would regularly attend Marcuse's courses. She set her sights on attending the University of Frankfurt for graduate in philosophy. In 1965, she graduated magna cum laude, a member of the Phi Beta Kappa. While living in Germany, she lived with a group of students in a loft in an old factory. Many of her roommates were active in Social German Student Union, a movement becoming popular with the youth of West Germany, and Davis participated in some of the group's action. After spending two years in Frankfurt, she moved back to the United States and attended the University of California, where Marcuse was now teaching. She went on to gain a master's degree in 1968. As a graduate student at the University of California, she joined several groups, including the Black Panthers, but she spent most of her time working with the Chai Lung Border Club, 
which was an all-black branch of the Communist Party. In 1969, she was hired to teach at the University of California, turning down offers from both Princeton and Swarthmore due to the urban location of the University of California. As well as being a member of the Communist Party, Angela Davis was known at this time as a radical feminist, an activist, an affiliate of the Los Angeles chapter of the Black Panther Party. This did not sit well with the university and they fired her, but she fought them in court and got her job back. Outside of academia, Angela Davis had become a strong supporter of three prison inmates of Soledad Prison, known as the Soledad Brothers, although they were not related. These three men, John W. Clachette, Fleeter Drumgo, and George Lester Jackson were accused of killing a prison guard after several African American inmates had been killed in a fight by another guard. During Jackson's trial in August 1970, an escape attempt was made when Jackson's brother Jonathan entered the courtroom to claim hostages he could exchange for his brother. As Jackson transported the hostages and two black convicts away from the court, the police began shooting at the vehicle. Jonathan Jackson, Superior Court Judge Harold Haley, and two inmates were killed in the ensuing shootout. A warrant was issued for Angela's arrest as it was found that several of the firearms Jackson brother used in the attack were licensed to Angela and it was also reported that she was in love with Jackson. According to California state law, all persons concerned in the commission of a crime, whether they directly commit the act constituting the offense, or aid and abet are principal in any crime so committed. On August 18, four days after the warrant was issued, the FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover listed Davis on the FBI 10 most wanted list. Davis fled California and became a fugitive. According to her autobiography, during this time she lived in friends' homes and moved mainly at night. It wasn't until October 19 of that same year she was found by the FBI agents in a motor lodge in New York. The news of her arrest quickly spread across the United States. Thousands of people began to organize a movement to gain her release. On January the 5th, 1971, Davis appeared at Marine County Superior Court and declared her innocence before the court and the nation. I now declare publicly before the court, before the people of this country, that I am innocent of all charges which have been levied against me by the state of California. Her case drew the attention of the international press and news outlets were reporting on this case. In New York, black writers formed a committee called the Black People in Defense of Angela Davis. On January 28, 1972, Garrett Trapnell hijacked TWA Flight 2. One of his demands was Davis's release. Over 200 local committees, including 67 foreign countries, worked to free Davis from prison. In 1972, after 16 months of imprisonment, Davis was released on bail. Then later, a dairy farmer by the name of Roger McAfee paid her 100,000 bail with the help of Steve Parcino, a wealthy business owner. Davis was acquitted in June 1972 after a 13-hour deliberation, she was found not guilty. The judge citing that the fact that she owned the guns used was insufficient to establish her as being involved in the crime. Davis would go on an international speaking tour which included Cuba, where her reception by the Afro-Cubans at a mass rally was so enthusiastic she was reported barely able to speak. In the Soviet Union, Davis visited the USSR at invitation of the Central Committee, where she received an honorary doctorate from Moscow State University. In East Germany, she went to receive another honorary degree from the University of Leipzig and the Star of the People's Friendship Award from the Walter Albrecht. Some of Davis' most notable activism movements were speaking against the Vietnam War, racism, and other social injustice in 1969. In 2001, she spoke against the war on terror after the 9-11 attacks. She was a keynote speaker at the Vanderbilt University in 2004 
and in 2008, the University of Virginia, Carter G. Woodson Institute for African American and African Studies. Her name is solidified in history and she continues to actively contribute for many social movements. She is the author of several books, including Woman, Race and Class, 1980s, Blues Legacy and Black Feminism, Gertrude Moraney, Bessie Simmet, and Billie Holiday, 1999, Our Prison Obsolete, 2003, Abolition Democracy, Beyond Empire, Prison on Torture, 2005, the Meaning of Freedom and Other Difficult Dialogues, 2012, and Freedom is a Constant Struggle, Ferguson, Palestine, and Foundations of a Movement, 2016. It was announced on January 27, 2009, that Julie Dash, who is credited as the first black female director to have a theatrical release of a film, Daughters of the Dust in the US will be directing a biopic on Davis's life. Angela Davis is one of the most famous figureheads fighting for racial, gender and economic equality and still fighting today. It has been said that what she stands for is more relevant than ever. Do you agree? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, if you like what we do, please like, share and subscribe.